This is a short video on the Ediston EC10 communications receiver. Uh, initially launched onto the market in 1963 with uh, the Mark II, which this is at one example, being released in 1967 and going through to 1977 when the uh, sets were discontinued. It covers 550 kilohertz up to 30 megahertz. Uh, and the tuning is your typical Ediston thing with a whacking great uh, flywheel in it and uh, lots of uh, wonderful gearing in here which is uh, very much the way that Ediston designed stuff. The Mark II has this uh, signal strength meter on it which although that isn't actually S points, it's a, a logarithmic scale of. Ediston were famous for their build quality and this is no exception. Really good um, solid steel case that um, held on with some lovely shiny screws. Also typical of the 1960s, this connector on the back here, these two pins here are live mains. There's no insulation on there and uh, although the, the connector is handed so you can't plug it in the wrong way, this wiring looks extremely thin for, um, for 250 volt mains. The antenna connections are by way of the um, this little plug board in the back. This socket here is a high impedance connection for a telescopic aerial. Uh, this is a 75 ohm connection. I've actually uh, hooked it up to a 50 ohm uh, BNC connector so I can connect my um, antenna system to that. Okay, let's see uh, how it performs. Obviously no warm up time on this because it's transistors. Uh, we're on the uh, longest wave bands here, uh, band 5 on here, which is 550 kilohertz to 1.5 megahertz. These are mostly broadcast bands. Now we're going to put the AGC on because um, obviously with broadcast band stations they're very strong so the AGC will work fine on that. And so John would be in his living room, he'd have lots of stations on this uh, very sensitive receiver. And you can just imagine John sitting there in his uh, lounge, Stan also in his lounge, in his arm. So that's the low end of the set. So let's switch up to much higher frequency end of the set. This is band two, which is eight and a half to 18 megahertz. And let's have a listen around the broadcast bands on 17 megs. The tuning is much more sensitive up here and the fine tune really comes into its own. It pretty doesn't do anything much on the, on the low frequency bands but up here the fine tune, the fine tune is brilliant. The AGC is working well on this because you can actually see the meter going up and down as the uh, conditions change, the atmospheric conditions change. So that, this is the 80 meter amateur band. So it looks like there's some AM on that. And this is a single sideband station, so we'll switch the BFO on. It's 
quite fiddly to get this adjusted correctly. What I'm trying to do now is to adjust the BFO to get the frequency shift correct. These radios are not easy to use with the single sideband signal. This is a very strong signal now. You have to be very quick on the uh, on the gain control. So let's see whether we get anywhere with the CW end of the band. Now this, we're in the middle of the afternoon at the moment, so the, um, the, there isn't a lot of stations on 80 meters. Um, this would be virtually impossible in the evening. It would be completely overloaded with stations. Okay, so let's see how this compares with a more modern rig. One of the problems is I have no idea what frequency this is actually on. Although the band shows um, about 3.55, it's very, very difficult to know what the actual frequency is to this um, more modern. Obviously with the modern rig we've got a nice frequency readout and it's completely stable, there's no changing of the frequency. Whereas with the Edison, but there's plenty of gain. So quite a usable radio really, um, does work but it takes a lot of fiddling to get the, um, to get the settings correct and certainly the AGC is useless on uh, when you're running on the CW. Anyway that's a quick look at the radio, um, it's, uh, it is what it is, um, 1967 uh, transistor radio with 10 transistors in it.